Well, we thought, you know, wouldn't it be fun to go and listen to Lori Vallow's testimony one more time? But, you know, <laughs> we don't want to start crying uh, ourselves uh, to sleep every night because it was disturbing. And we had a chance to listen to that yesterday. I've seen every which way breakdown of everything that she said by now. You probably have as well if you're following uh, this. But what is next for Lori uh, other than being completely uh, non uh, cognizant of what is going on in her surroundings and will what we saw in court uh, just the other day at her sentencing have any effect on the other charges that she is facing because there are more murder charges against Lori Vallow Daybell. Let's start. Hey, I'm there. surprised. I had no idea that there was more stuff. I thought we had everything put into a, a brown paper bag and we were walking out of the store with it. Now we've got more. It was almost the prequel of what we saw uh, at the uh, the first trial. There's more. There's a lot more uh, to come as she's known as the doomsday mom. She's slated to face charges in now Arizona following the completion of her case in Idaho. The Maricopa County attorney, Rachel Mitchell, announced her intent to file extradition papers for Daybell, who could return to Arizona before the year's end. The process is expected to take three to four months. Daybell's legal complications very far from over. Mitchell divulged she's facing two conspiracy cases. She's out of Gilbert for an attempted murder, and the other is out of Chandler for an actual murder. So those would be on top of the conviction she's already received out of Idaho. Daybell's anticipated arrival in Arizona will lead to her detention at a Maricopa County Sheriff's Office jail for what could be a protracted period of time. Daybell, who is now 50, was sentenced to life on Monday uh, to life imprisonment without parole for the deaths of her two youngest children and a woman she perceived as a romantic adversary, uh, Tammy uh, Daybell, the wife of Chad Daybell, who died under mysterious circumstances right when she hooked up with Chad. This complex case was rife with peculiar claims. Daybell suggested that her children were zombies and that she was a divine entity charged with instigating an apocalypse, uh, endearing her with the Doomsday Mom nickname. In May, Daybell was declared guilty for the killings of her two youngest children, seven-year-old Joshua J.J. Vallow and 16-year-old Tylee Ryan, and for conspiring to murder Tammy Daybell, the previous wife of her fifth husband, Chad Daybell. Her husband now awaits uh, his own trial on murder charges. Uh, he will be facing that next year. In Arizona, Daybell will face severe charges there. In 2021, a Maricopa County grand jury indicted her for conspiring to murder her fourth husband, Charles Vallow. This was not in her last case at all. Uh, of course, Charles was brought up many times, and there was a lot of insinuation to his death and alleged murder, but this is where she's actually going to face the music on it. According to police reports, Alex Cox, Daybell's brother, shot and killed Charles Vallow in Chandler on July 11th of 19. Additionally, a second Arizona indictment released in May of this year charged Daybell with conspiring to murder Brandon Boudreaux, her niece's ex-husband. Allegedly, Cox shot at Boudreaux in Gilbert on October 2nd of 2019, but failed to hit him. Cox, who was never charged, died later that year due to what authorities deemed natural causes i think that's another one that needs to be looked into if there's yeah. any if there's still a body uh you'll recall that that was brought up in the trial the being shot at brandon even testified to that uh in the case even though daybell is already serving multiple life sentences in idaho maricopa county is pressing forward with their cases against her mitchell justified this move by stating that it is a matter of securing justice for daybell's purported victims in arizona if you're the loved one of the victims here or you're the victim here, you're entitled to justice as well. And so we're going to make sure that is done in these cases, Mitchell said. As Daybell's legal journey proceeds, it's becoming evident that she will continue to be subjected to the full force of the law. Uh, I think despite the multitude of charges already levied against her and uh, her current mental state, with what we heard yesterday, her claiming... That she's friends with Tammy Daybell, who she was charged and convicted of being a conspirer in her murder. That she's good friends with her. Her good friend. They communicate from the grave 
And Tammy has a very busy life up there. She has a lot of jobs along with JJ and Tylee who are also working quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is the lunacy that she was talking about. And I tell you, I don't think that this woman was spinning a tale of, uh, of, of bullshit. Uh, I mean, it was bullshit, but I think she believes it. I don't think she was spinning a tale that she does not believe. I think she fully yeah. is in, enveloped in this and she believes she's talking to dead people. I feel like if you stuck a, um, a lie detector on her, it yeah. would show that she's telling the truth. It doesn't mean that what she's saying is factual, but like you said, she absolutely believes in her heart and in her brain that these people are, they've just moved on to another plane and they've got jobs and they've got responsibilities and duties and they're having just a gay old time wherever they are and whatever plane they're at. And they're hanging out with Jesus and they're, you know, they're wearing robes and sandals and drinking wine. They're having a great old time right now. That's what she's probably believing. Uh, yeah, I think that that's exactly what she's believing. Another person I'd like to question the sanity of was Valo's attorney, John Thomas. Yes, please. Uh, who was making other bizarre statements during the trial, starting out with some sanity. I think Lori Daybell is the most hated woman in America right now and maybe in the world. That was a very true statement. Uh, but then when he went on to say she's misunderstood and that she actually is all about love, people who truly know her know she's about love. We didn't always get along, and our team has had a lot of misunderstandings, but Lori's overarching theme is still about love. She's very different than what she plays on TV. She's smart, insightful, and witty. I think somebody's trying to, like I said earlier, I think somebody's trying to get hooked up with some sort of conjugal visit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, yeah, something doesn't sound right. It's like, yeah, she could have been very loving and a wonderful mother until she wasn't. And when she wasn't, she took it to such an extreme that now she's in jail for the rest of her life. So I don't know how you can say how you can just say that about somebody. It's one thing to say she was a loving mother and then something changed. That might make more sense to those of us who are st steeped in reality mm -hmm. but there is nothing about her that says that she's a loving mother at this point nor has there been uh yeah it, it just seems just so far out there i'd like this i wonder if we can get john thomas on the show because <laughs> i i would like to i'd like to have a conversation with him and not just throw a bunch of shit at him and say what the fuck uh i i would like to hear this uh this explanation uh, to his rant the other day. Uh, and that's really it, it what it was. It would be interesting to get his take on it because it was so off the charts, WTF. Like, what are you talking about? Exactly. I mean, it, it was, it, there was so much more information there that needed to be there. We didn't need to learn about how he drove to work and this or that and took this job here. And it's like, get to the fucking point. But then when he did, it was like a love letter to Lori. Well, and he 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 brought up MLK. I mean, what? Yeah. The f no, quoting MLK. <laughs> no, that that's that's when I like I flew back in my chair and went, no, yeah. I, no, do not it, take that man's name out of your face. It's it's not appropriate. Get it out of your mouth. It is not appropriate in this venue. I don't Shame know. On you. I don't know who to look at as having the crazier statement at the sentencing hearing Lori or him yeah because well, Lori, they, they both rivaled each other it's like they <sighs> sat down and wrote them together well, it's like Lori, you already kind of knew if she was going to speak it was going to be something like this i didn't expect her to speak that was that was the surprising part i think everyone is the fact that she talked but i think almost everyone assumed that if she were to talk it was going to be something along those lines and so she delivered pretty much what everyone was expecting and maybe even a little bit more because there's always that line of really with Lori validable, but the attorney, John Thomas, I don't know. I got, I, I don't know. That one was just a little bit weird, a little bit too well, I'm weird. I'm trying to look him up as we speak. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it, man. Cause I would like to know really what his thoughts are. Why, why does he feel that she's misunderstood? I wanted take a dive in there and go, what do you see that we're not seeing? Because here's what we're seeing. What are you seeing? John Thomas, we have questions and you have answers.
Let's talk. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.